There's a new wave of names making their mark in season 2018, and with four different winners from as many races, it's no wonder the fans are pouring into this iconic venue. Welcome to the Grand Prix of Long Beach for rounds five and six of the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks today on CBS Sports. I'm Matt Nolte along with Sean Sermon. And Sean, Long Beach is our longest running street course on the series. And over the years, it's turned on some great racing. Yeah, it absolutely has. And not just great racing, but great competitors over yeah. the years. How cool is this? How about Matty Brabham? Matt Brabham winning here last year. I'm looking, the, he's going to run really well. But we go all the way back like 30 years ago. His dad has won here several times in different classes, raced here in IndyCar as well. So, I mean, we're going back several generations of racers, a lot of great talent from all over the, the, the world here in motorsports. And we bring them here, we put them in super trucks and run them right on the streets of Long Beach. It's pretty wild. He's one of 14 drivers we got in the field here this weekend looking to make their mark over two big races around these concrete canyons. It's time to go racing. As here we are, we got them gridded up and ready to rock, ready to roll here in the streets of Long Beach. As you see there, there's the Speed Energy girls out there ready to go here. So exciting stuff. We said this is a great course, always makes for excellent racing here in Long Beach. We're on board with Robbie Gordon. One of the longest, fastest sections in all of Stadium Super Trucks racing is down Seashore Drive here as they are wide open third gear, pinned out over 150 miles an hour. Then have hard break into this turn section right here. One big 90 degree turn as they go around into a bit of a sweeper. Now they're told, hey, stay out of the flowers, stay out of the bushes as they go around the fountain. Does that work? Not normally. Most of the drivers grow a bit of a green thumb going through that section here. So a tight section with switchbacks right to left, hard 90 degree turns. Then they start to get on the gas a little bit. Now back on the binders, back down to second gear, hard 90. Fast section here. Coming up though, it's all about your entry going into the next, this next turn right here. This is more than a 90 degree to the left here. This is very extreme left. You see Robbie Gordon, he goes way to the outside, gets on the handbrake just a little bit. Right there, so that gets you around se seven. And a big jump down, Pine, Pine Ave right here now. We get into a hard 90 degree right. This is a wide open session. This is straight underneath the convention center. Wide open, if you're in that area listening, the, the sound of the motors are just bellowing off the walls right here as they are just pinned out. We see a lot of big braking mistakes right here. A lot of shadows in the track coming underneath the convention center. A lot of mistakes are made right here in this very section. Hard braking, 90 left. One more jump underneath this bridge and then just a big sweeper. We see a lot of trucks bicycling here. A lot up on two wheels, you see Robbie Gordon almost doing the same right there. Hard up on three and right here, a lot of bumping, a lot of grinding right here in the last and final turn. This is turn 11. You see, stays in second gear, wide open, gags the throttle, boom, there's ramp number one. Total tires ramp number two lands, shift into third gear and dropping the pedal all the way down that front stretch. And that there, folks, is a lap here in Long Beach. And here's how the points look after we arrived back from Adelaide at the previous event of the championship. Matt Brabham's now leading the championship from Gavin Harlan. Ari Leindijk third, back to Robbie Gordon and Cole Potts. Let's take a look at the grid, though, for round five of this year's Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. An inversion from qualifying gives Ari Leindijk Jr. a pole position alongside Eric Davis, who's back in the field. Bill Hines and Troy Didi on the next row. Davey Hamilton Jr. back in the field alongside Abdali Lopez. Aaron Bumbach and Paul Morris, your defending champion. Cole Potts and Blade Hildebrand, the two rookies off the fifth row. Back to Harlan and Hoffman and Brabham and Gordon starting from the back. Brabham with the orange background there indicating he's your series leader in Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. And here we are on board with Robbie Gordon. It's just saw 14 trucks in this field, the biggest field we've seen in a long time. Cole Potts right there in the Hallmark Trust.com number 60. He's ready to rock. He's had a great opening season. And there's Abdali Lopez, the number 18, the Speed Energy RPM off-road. And of course, Ari Leyendijk Jr. in the number 25 sitting on the pole, which is bad news for everyone else. It's an enormous crowd here today. It's a special moment. The 100th race of the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks as we get set. Oh, Ari's decided to go a little bit early here. Oh. And Ari needs to back this truck up. So a little bit trigger happy from the United Fiber and Data number 25. Now, will he stay or will we go green? The flag is about to drop. He pulls the truck back into position. And now we go. 
And now we get underway here, and he almost backs into his teammate, Bill Hines, but the 14 trucks get going here in race number one. We head down to that chicane. Uh, the most unusual start I've seen here in the wow. history of Stadium Super Trucks when the flagger brought up to the 15 second marker. Ari got a little jumpy and took off, got back in line just in time. As here he is, the number 25 United Fiber and Data of Ari Leyendijk Jr. He leads the pack over always evolving Eric Davis in P2. And as I mentioned, 14 trucks, not 10, not 12, 14, the biggest field we've seen in years here in Stadium Super Trucks. So uh, that's going to be a lot of paint swapping going on here. Uh, how many of those 14 finish, it's hard to tell because it's going to get really aggressive. This is a tight section of the track here, as we saw earlier. We've seen a lot of contact over, years, you know, over the years here in Long Beach. Everybody's behaving themselves on the first of 10 laps around here. The competition caution to come up during this race. But Dyke Jr. leads Eric Davis down into Pine Avenue. Bill Hines, our recent winner, a brand new winner in the series back at Lake Elsinore earlier this year. So they hook through the left-hander. It's the first big ramp around this nearly two-mile course. Now we're going into this turn, this section here. This is turn eight coming up. As I mentioned, braking is a big issue coming in between turn eight going into turn nine. They're in a big pack right now. I think we're going to see a lot of smoke coming off the tires. Uh, we should see some mistakes in this section. You're going to see a lot of passing happen right here, especially in lap one where they're so tight. And the light change underneath Whoa. there. Oh, speaking of changes, look at down the bottom here for Eric Davis just pulling up that always evolving number 75 as the field stack up. That additional two trucks makes it look very busy out there. It certainly does. There is Abdali Lopez. He is hot on the heels of Troy Didi in the 441. Smoke off the tires of Hines. Hines has a window net down in the number 57. That is going to, we're wondering to see if race control sees that. They might call the red flag or give him a black flag possibly to get that window up. There is big airtime. These guys jumping almost 300 feet off that Toyo Tires ramp here. Almost the distance of a football field as they are all packed up three wide. Bombach to the outside. Due to the inside. Troy Didi about to get the Malachi Crunch. The speed down this straight is incredible, but it's pulling these trucks up for this tight left-hander in a turn number one. Look at Bumbach in the strategic staffing solutions number three, the man from Rochester in Michigan. Down the inside, they bang panels. Harlan was lucky to get away with that one. There's Cole Potts in the field as down into this turn two, three, and four chicane we go. Oh, boy, three wide. Look at Didi stacking them up. The 441 stacking these guys up. We got 47 to Hoff. His hit's peeling up already. He got caught up in that. Didi got in there, braked a little early. Everyone said, whoa, what's going on? And they all kind of got into each other. We're only on lap number two, and we've got Hood's man all up. A lot of wild stuff right there. As we see, we're on board right now with Gavin Harlan. He is looking back at Aaron Bombach. Aaron Bombach running well. And there is Potts. He is hard on the brakes right there, going into this number six, into number seven turn. I said that's a very extreme fast turn right there. You see these guys going wide to the right off that Toyo tires jump, letting the truck unload to the inside. Oh, Potts are on the outside. Hoffman gets a little bit of contact from Didi, I believe, on board with Troy Didi right now in the 441. He follows in the draft behind Hoffman. Hoffman's got his hood pushed up in his face. What a damage on the front of that 47. Oh, Lopez locks the reason that speed energy. Number 18 down into the right-hander. So we pick up the leaders. There's Hines running back in third still. Here's Davis. And we've got the 52 of Davey Hamilton Jr. who's back in the field. We haven't seen him since the middle part of last year as the leaders come out to complete another lap. Man, Ari Leyendijk has got a good lead here. That's what you said earlier. When Ari's sitting up on the pole, that's bad luck for him at qualifying. But and he's got a guy, he's got so much speed, so much talent. When he's starting up front and everyone else is dealing with this, what we're seeing right now, that gives a guy like that an opportunity to start checking out. That's the shot of the trucks landing there. Through the right hand, a high-speed approach. Lopez under siege with the two United Fiber and Data trucks are on board with your defending champion, Paul Morris, trying to make the door open here as his teammate, Gavin Harlan, goes around the outside here into turn one. Harlan the outside, then Morris dives to the inside. He makes that pass stick. They are now in front of Abdali Lopez. Then we see, I believe, in P2 right now, that is Hamilton Jr. Davis, and he always evolving right behind him in P3. Now we're on board with Paul, the dude, Morris. Morris, a good shot back at Lopez. Lopez, quiet guy in the paddock, an animal on the track. You see him right now in the RPM off-road speed truck. Really kind of super squirrely a few weeks ago in Elsinore, but he's really fast there. He can be squirrely and feel comfortable. This is not the place to be doing that at 150 miles an hour. Not at all. Bumbuck goes down the inside out to make that pass stick. Robbie Gordon starting to slice his way through the field from the back. He's up to 10th position behind Hoffman and ahead of Cole Potts out there in that HallmarkTrust.com number 61 of two rookies 
running full time. You see, our oh, contact down here at turn eight. Bumbuck has gone around the Hoff. There's nowhere to go. Potts got into Hoffman, it looked like, just a little bit. It's hard to tell at first glance. It looked like Bombach, he was all on his own. Hoffman's doing his thing. I think Potts maybe just barely touched the Hoff. Got the Hoff into Bombach. And uh, so the only one that got out of that somewhat unscathed is Cole Potts. He even got on the binders a little bit. Here we are on board with that Dali Lopez going around this sweeping turn. That's turn 10 right there as they're going into 11. So a lot of contact right here in turn 11, as we're expecting. But let's take a moment here. Let's go back and see exactly what happened. We slowed it down. Potts, number 60, gets into the 47 to Hoff. Hoff gets into Bombach. Bombach just misses Gordon. Both get into the wall a little bit there. Wild ride, and there's Cole Potts. Here we are. I'm Cole Potts. I'm good. I'm good. I'm the inside. Can I make it work? I don't know. Uh, I just oh. touched my buddy. Just touched him. And that's all it needs. This is from Hoffman going down the right-hander as he gets the close block. A Domino's effect, wasn't it? And Bumbuck facing the wrong direction. Had to go back up Pine Avenue the wrong way to turn the number three back around. That's the view. First to second. We've got second, third, and fourth. Hamilton Jr. going down the inside of Bill Hines and taking Gavin Harlan with him. So there it is. Jr. to the inside. Harlan to the outside now in that sweep and turn. Not quite where Hamilton would want him to be. Hamilton still gets a nose on him. Keeps him to the outside a little bit. Keeps Harlan where he needs him to be, so Harlan could not strike there for Hamilton Jr. Harlan behind him. Looks like we are still Hines. Still Hines with the window net down. I can't believe they haven't thrown a black flag for him yet. Hines knows it's down. It's obvious. He doesn't care. He's just getting it right now. And race control is on that side of the truck too, which is bad news for him as Harlan trying to go the long way around here on Hamilton Jr. We're coming up towards the first of our competition cautions here in this round of Spin Energy Stadium Super Trucks. That was a key moment to send for Harlan going down the inside of Hamilton Jr. And there is your competition yellow. That is your first mandatory comp caution. That being said, a lot of laps left to go racing here in the Long Beach Grand Prix. We'll be right back with you in just a little bit. Stadium Super Trucks on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Toyo Tires. We are Toyo, all or nothing. And by KMC Wheels, precision for imprecise environments. Well, as ever, Long Beach is turned on in style. Here's a great party atmosphere. We always enjoy coming to this race, don't we? Absolutely do. You know, year after year, it just gets better and better. It's such a fun family atmosphere. So much going on, a lot of great stuff. But speaking of great stuff, we got something special for you right around the corner here. Robbie Gordon had an opportunity to speak to us about his new Textron off-road vehicle. Two weeks ago, we actually launched the Articat XX. This is a car that we originally designed for, uh, for Articat. Now Textron owns it, and it's called the Textron Off-Road XX. It's been released to the dealers. We got it here at Long Beach Grand Prix on display. Uh, we're also going to use it for the pace car here at Long Beach. When I designed the car originally, I wanted to have a good feeder series for SST. So I feel that this car is durable enough that we can run it in some of our stadium races. Obviously, there's people racing them in desert, but it's not just a race car. This thing's built like a race car, but can be an average day, everyday consumer UTV. What we've learned with the SST trucks and the Baja trucks over the years, I've been able to incorporate a lot of those designs into the UTV, which if you look how the Textron flies compared to the others, it's front high, altitude out there, quite a long ways in distance. Suspension's completely different than what's out there in the market. Pretty much in the beginning, we were, we were handed an engine, a gearbox, and a front diff. Uh, from there, we kind of had free reign to design the body, the suspension, the chassis. We worked in collaboration with those guys, and we got probably what I think is the coolest car out there in the UTV market. It really is an exciting time in Spin Energy Stadium Super Trucks as this series continues to get bigger and bigger. The first competition caution is done, and we're set to go racing in the second segment of this 100th race in the series history as we go back to green flag racing. We're off and running, five in, five to go here in the streets of Long Beach. Troy Deedy, he gets sideways off those ramps, but almost puts it into the wall right there. There is a great overhead shot. That is Brabham and Davis right there going at it. Look at, we got one hood shoved way up. It's hard to see from a distance, but that's a lot of oh, race. Oh, Hines, oh, where's Hines? Hines going? Straight down the escape road, and lucky not to take one or two trucks with him. Wow, Bill Hines, but if he lost his brakes or something had happened there, or maybe slipped his foot off the brake pedal, but what a flyby. So lucky he didn't get anyone else. We're gonna go back to grab another quick look at this. Here we are on board with Hines. Hines like, oh no, oh no, oh no. 
Frisco smoking by when see him shaking his head a little bit there. Not overly excited with that. So. Putting back a ton of positions now as Gordon and Hamilton Jr. go at it down here into turn number six. And a little turn left seven here that takes you over the Toyo tyres ramp. Leindijk Jr. continues to lead, but Harlan is close on the back of him now. And Gordon, from 14th, finds himself inside the top four already. There's been just so much pinballing going on so far in this race, and Robbie Gordon is the king of staying out of the nonsense. I bet you his truck looks clean on the outside as well. As we're on board with Abdali Lopez right now, he is behind Cole Potts. Potts is pulling up next to Eric Davis as we talked a lot about outbreaking one another <laughs> in this section here. Smoke off of Davis's tires, smoke off of Abdali's. Cole Potts says, hey man, I'm calm, I'm cool, I'm collected as he moves up another position. They were three wide going down the backside of the circuit into the hairpin. The two UFD trucks lead us out of this unbelievably tight hairpin to complete another lap of this race. So much to play out here still as the field is stacked up at the hairpin. Look at there is the Bilbis. Number 83, that is Matty Brabs with his hood shoved up. We didn't see exactly where that happened, but as we mentioned earlier on in the earlier laps here, a lot of contact going on. Troy Deedy getting into some different things, breaking people pretty hard there. So a lot of different things happen, and that's a long race for Matt Brabham when you're wide open on these straightaways and you can't see where you're going. Two guys out in front right now that are yet to post wins. Uh -oh. As Morris now has the Bill Hines syndrome going to turn number one, tags the wall. In fact, oh. that's a messy spin, and it's collected by Hoffman now. Oh boy, Bill Hines a lap before, now Paul the Dude Morris in the same spot on this lap. Both these guys having big breaking problems. He collects his teammate, the Hoff. The Hoff has nowhere to go. Dude gets into the tires, bounces back out. Hoff gets collected. Here we are. On board with the Dude. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh oh He gets into the tire wall, bounces him back out, a lot of rebound. Boom, there's your teammate, the Hoff. So lucky he didn't collect anyone else. Here we are on board with Jeff Hoffman. Out of room. Where am I going to go, man? I can't do anything about it. I got to get into you. Sorry about that, dude. Here we are with Cole Potts. He sees the whole thing unfold. Cole goes to the inside. He's like, that's a bummer, but I'll take that spot from the both of you. So Cole Potts moves up two positions. You get the feeling Hoffman was going to hit the wall regardless of what Morris was going to be there. He was locking up coming in. So we're going to change the lead now. Change the lead here at turn number nine. And Gavin Harlan puts it down the inside. So still UFD trucks one and two. Now Leindijk goes back into second. And guess who's right on the bumper? Ryan Dyke moves back a spot. Robbie Gordon in that Toyo Tires number seven moves up into P3, starting all the way back in the 14th spot. Looks like Ryan Dyke Jr., he gets a little sideways. Gordon's gonna try to capitalize on that. Harlan, way out in the lead right now, pulling a big lead on those guys as they slow each other down. Gordon, can he make the pass? Not quite sure if he did yet. There goes Matty Brabham, he's in the mix now. Now some of the fastest guys at Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks are out in front with just a handful of laps left to go. Oh no! That's Lopez. Lopez on his side, and it appears he's been tripped over by the ramp, the second ramp at least, and now the Speed Energy number 18 is on its side, and the red flag has come out. That could be a key moment in this race for Gavin Harlan. Absolutely, it could. That could be the deciding factor. Here we are. There is. Oh, no. Hildebrand. No, oh, everyone going nice and clean. Getting over it, and Abdali Lopez, he gets a little sideways off the Hawk performance. What a great shot of it there. Wild ride for him. Luckily, it didn't look like the roll cage or anything hit too hard. Here we are on board. Sideways. I'm going this way. I'm going that way. Oh, and this bearing in the talent column blew out right there as he gets up into the wall. Here's the view from Cole Potts. The HallmarkTrust.com entry goes across the top. He misses the scene of the crime there as the spin energy number 18 is on its side. And Abdali Lopez climbs out of truck number 18 in front of this really loud crowd. We'll head to a break with Harlan, Gordon and Leindijk, your top three under Reds here at Long Beach. We're back at Long Beach, some of these amazing shots. The crowds are absolutely jammed in against the fences here at Long Beach once again as this capacity field of stadium super trucks have been wearing the crowds. The red flag is still out here at the moment. The trucks are just cruising around to a stop on the backside of the circuit with Harlan, your leader. Uh, that big moment for Abdali Lopez has bought out the red in the middle of this race. That's right, Abdali. It looks like we're going to take another look at it here and show you exactly if you weren't in with us a few minutes ago. Here's Abdali Lopez. Oh, two tires doesn't do it. You need all four off the ramp. We've tested it numerous times in the past. No one's been successful as Abdali Lopez in the RPM off-road speed energy. Toyo tires machine is in the wall and upside down. And there is the Long Beach Grand Prix staff getting that truck rolled over. It was very similar to Craig Dauntas' crash last year at Perth in Western Australia. And, oh, no, 
They have decided to wave oh, the checkered flag. Can you believe this? Well, it looks like they are out of time, taking more time than necessary to get that truck rolled over onto all fours. But there is your winner, and a W is a W for the number 55 of Gavin Harlan. And he'll take the win, his very first win in Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. It's our fifth different race winner in as many races this year. Robbie Gordon scores another top three, and Ari Leindijk Jr. completes that top three. Let's check in with our brand new winner. I am beyond stoked. This is definitely my favorite track, so uh, to come out here and win it, first race of the weekend, could not have started the weekend any better. I mean, there was that wreck at the end and got cut a little short, but I'll still take it as a solid win. I mean, I made so many passes, came from 11th all the way up there. So anything could have happened with Robbie behind me those last three laps, but I'll take it and I'll go out in there and get another win tomorrow, hopefully. We had a good little battle going there. It's pretty cool because we have the same exact truck, so the fans probably loved it. Uh, just went outside in the last, those two corners, eight and nine, uh, got on the inside of them, hit the jump side by side, and then I knew he was going to try to go on the inside, save the line, so I just outside hit him again and got a run down the straightaway. But he's a really good competitor. I love racing against him. And got to thank UFT Racing, Live, Road Pod, everybody out there, and Clayton, my dad. And I dedicate this uh, race to my sister. She has autism, and it's Autism Awareness Month, so this one's for her. boy, kid. Great driver, great talent. There are our points after round five right now. Maddie Brabham up top. Let's take a moment to go down and speak with our third place finisher. You know, it was good going side by side over the jump with Robbie. Uh, shame we couldn't finish the race. I know that we had that red flag situation, but uh, the truck was good. I was just kind of conserving because I knew we had another segment afterwards. Um, but really, uh, big thank you to UFD for having me come out. Uh, we had a blast today. We got two trucks in the top three. So uh, hopefully tomorrow we can start, uh, you know, we'll probably start somewhere mid pack and uh, hopefully we can get up front. Well done to Gavin Harlan, that shortened race. Robbie Gordon finished in second place. His sixth top three of the season in that spit energy entry. And Ari Leindijk Jr. finished in third. We'll take a very short break. Round number six is coming up right after this at Long Beach. We're back at Long Beach, an amazing afternoon of racing coming up here for round number six of this year's Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks on CBS Sports today. Matt Nolte and Sean Sermony with you for race number two. And we're getting set, different conditions to yesterday. We've repaired the trucks from overnight, and now we get set for the final race with Aaron Bumbach off pole position. Right next to him is Abdali Lopez, row number two, Bill Hines and Paul Morris, both of them having a little bit of trouble in race number one. Hoffman, Didi, Eric Davis, Cole Potts, Blade Hildebrand and Davey Hamilton Jr. starting towards the back of the pack. Then, of course, as we go faster and faster, the guys that did really well in race one, number one, they're penalized by going all the way to the back. So that means Ari Leyendike Jr., Matty Brabham, Gavin Harlan, and Robbie Gordon, those are the guys that are punished for being so fast on round number one. So let's go down to the starting grid here, and there is number 55. Round one here this weekend in Long Beach, your winner, Gavin Harlan. There is Cole Potts in the HallmarkTrust.com, number 60, he's ready to rock. And of course, Jeff Hoffman in the number 47. He is on the run chasing the colors of the live United Fiber and Data Shock. And Abdali Lopez, he was upside down, but he's right side up here for round number two here in Long Beach. They worked late in the night last night to fix up the number 18 truck, and he's back in the field. A capacity field, a capacitive crowd here today, too, ready for race number two in round eight of the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks for 2018. Aaron Bumbuck, he only makes guest appearances in the series. He leads the field away and has a massive margin going down to turn number one as these 14 trucks settle into a groove here. As you said, Aaron Bombach only with a few races here and there, but he is a road course specialist, street course specialist on the asphalt here. Uh, very, very talented driver. He can drive the wheels off of anything. This weekend is his first weekend here in Long Beach, in the streets of Long Beach. A lot of these guys have years of experience in different classes and stuff here. So curious to see what Bombach's going to bring to the table starting up front. First time he'd been on pole position since Toronto back in 2014. Lopez goes with him. There's Bill Hines and Paul Morris going through the right-hander. So UFD's running third, fourth, and fifth at the moment. But watch the back of the field for the likes of Gordon Brabham and Ari Leindijk to come through the field too. He started near back in this race as Hines. Fancies a look down the inside. Can't do it there. So you see these guys playing nice and calm with each other with and reason. And the first opening laps here, Lopez right behind Bombach. Oh, Bombach out there in a strategic staffing solutions truck, looking good and comfortable. Hildebrand goes to the inside of Davis. Not too much contact there. We've seen some big issues in that turn over the years. Last year, Davis got hard in the wall here. This year, he stayed clear of it. But going into that section, uh, turns eight into nine. A lot of action between those two with big high speeds up in the middle. There's oh, no. three wide. <laughs> Grab him to the inside of 
Hamilton Jr. Jr. backing off a little bit. Once again, not a ton of contact. Very surprised in that one. one. I don't normally expect that type of thing to happen. And Davis led it sideways down at Pine Avenue, and that truck's been dropping back through the field as the laps evolved here. And that always evolving number 75 through the hairpin, but Aaron Bumbach leads us through. Lopez reigned in second uh -oh. position. Oh, no. Contact again against the wall, and lucky this time for... Didi, the Hildebrand was on the left-hand side. We could have had another roll over there. If Hildebrand wasn't where he was at the time, Didi got so squirrely, he would have been undoubtedly up on his roof. But Hildebrand, being the nice guy that he is, able to help him out there. So big contact right there. See up on three wheels for our leaders. And look, here's a replay of it coming down the front. You see Didi, Didi sideways. Ooh. He gets into Hildebrand, pumps Hildebrand to the wall, then says, you know what? I'm going to give you one more. Gets up on two wheels. See, here we are on board with Troy Didi. Oh, I'm sorry, on board with Hildebrand. Didi gets into him. Hildebrand has nowhere cool. to go. Gets into him again. So, uh, played Hildebrand all on his own and just getting beat up out there. And all the while, Harlem was a big winner, getting two spots there. It's through turn number five, the run to six. So, the elbows are up, Harlem, on Didi. And Didi goes back two positions, and now Matt Brabham starts to turn up the temperature in that DeVilbis Hawk performance, number 83, searching for another win here. He won the final race at Adelaide this year, but on target at the moment, your series leader heading down towards turn number eight. Here right now to the inside of Hines, Ari Leindyke Jr., he hits by quick, nice and smooth. Brabham does the same as we hop on board with Bill Hines. Bill Hines puts it in third gear, he's wide open. Going down underneath and through the convention center here. This is we're talking about a lot of big braking issues right here. That is Potts, Brabham, Lion Dyke Jr. They all get through there clean. They got a lot of room to make up. But keep in mind, folks, we still have mandatory competition caution around the corner. So that's going to pack the pack back up again here very soon. Really tricky, that ramp. You've got to aim the truck at a different angle for that left-hander as we see some side-by-side -side action. Look at this crowd here today, Sam. We love coming to Long Beach, and they have stuck around for this incredible series, the final race of the weekend as they come through to complete another lap. How about the Hoff? Let's talk about just a while back. Uh, the, the Hoff was not quite where he needed to be. Now he's right where he needs to strike. He's going after Bombach. He's got the dude right behind him. He's got the talent. He's been waiting for a win. It's his second year in Stadium Super Trucks. This might be the opportunity for him to be up on top of the box. I love what we've seen so far. A variety of winners. There's a new wave, as we said at the top of the show, coming through Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. And it's really starting to show as we enter the busy part of this year's series. We're heading to Perth in Western Australia for the next round of Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. And then the big back-to-back -back races with Detroit and Texas. A combination of a street circuit, then back to a super speedway with a dirt track in the middle. We've got everything in this series. Here we are on board with the headstrong Dilbus number 83. Matty Brabs, second in points for 2017. Points leader right now in 2018. He files in behind Abdali Lopez. Abdali Lopez is right behind Cole Potts. Big gap in between them and the top three. There is the Hoff and Bombach going back and forth. So a good battle for the lead right now. And who's watching all of that unravel? The number one, your current champion, Paul the Dude Morris. He's watching your top two go back and forth, just saying, one of these guys is going to make a mistake, and I'm going to drive right by. On board now with Lion Dyke Jr. On the run to the right hand, and down the inside of Lopez he goes. So he's going with Brabham. They started near each other at the back of the field. So Ari, who finished third yesterday, still yet to win a race in Spin Energy Stadium Super Trucks. You get the feeling that's not too far away this year in this five-prong attack from UFD. Look at the smoke off of Brabham. Oh, Ari Lion Dyke Jr., he gets into the back of the Brabham. A little bumper-to-bumper -bumper action right there as they open it up. Second gear wide open down the front stretch. Potts, front end low. He's hitting that wide open. And then look at Lion Dyke Jr. pulls the ripcord and the hood goes flying. Where do you look? There's bits and pieces going everywhere. And now we've got a challenge for the lead because Bumbuck landed weird. It's now going to be three wide going to turn number one because Paul Morris, your defending Stadium Super Trucks champion, is in this. But Hoffman takes the lead now in turn number one. The dude's up to second. Look at it. We're on board with the Hoff. Looking back right now at Paul Morris behind him, Aaron Bombach. Great battle for the lead right now. As we talked earlier, though, the Hoff, it's time for him to win. He's ready to be on top of the box. This could be his chance. We're four of ten left in right now with the Hoff out in front. Looking really comfortable as they're slowly making their way to the first mandatory competition caution. Could we have our second newest winner in as many days here in Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks? Hoffman, Morris, and Bumbach. And now Brabham to the inside. He pushes the door open on Cole Potts' Hallmark Trust.com entry. 
Look how calm Brabham is, Brabham is inside the cab of that truck. He's so mellow. He's not making any moves that aren't unnecessary. Even getting in, having a little contact with Pops. Oh, oh boy. Look at that. Ari Leyendijk loses the hood, which I, is not necessarily a mechanical issue. And then something. What's in the rear? Oh, the rear end. Yeah, definitely broke the rear end there. So landing hard off these ramps, boom, right What's here. He's okay. Hood comes off, lands. Everything seems to be all right. And then as he's going down the straight, what's happening? He's like, I, I have no idea what's going on. There's no one got into me. No one's going by me. Still wondering what exactly happened as he's trying to bring that truck under control, working the brake pedal there. Can so. you believe the luck this guy's having after being on the podium yesterday in race number three? Great time for the competition caution to come as the Textron leads the field around. We'll take a break with Hoffman, Morris, and Bumbach, your top three in round six of Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks. Competition caution is done and we're set for race number two in round six of the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks of Long Beach. The green flag comes back out and a brand new leader leads us down the main straight. His name is Jeff Hoffman. Oh, the Hoff, he's looking so good, man. On the gas, looking comfortably. He's been watching a lot of his buddies. He's grown up with racing and are racing in the series as well. Winning some races stuff now. It's his turn, it's his time. Right behind him, it is Paul the Dude Morris to the inside of Bombach. It is Brabham, not able to make that stick. But look at, we still got Harlan, he's moving up. Hildebrand, he's moving up. So, a lot of racing left to go here. It's a single file, nice and easy. Everyone going around the fountain. As I said earlier in the show, a lot of green thumbs get growing in here. Not too many getting off into the weeds. That was our punishment. That's why we have to go after IndyCar now because we had completely taken the flower bed out years ago. But now we keep the people bellied up to the fences all day long as we hop on board with Maddie Brabos. And that's the Davilibus, headstrong, number 83 to the inside of the number three of Bombach. Can he make it stick? Yes, he does. Nice, clean pass. We've seen a lot of those out of Brabham so far today. And there is the Hoff, the dude. Brabham's in P3. So the Brabham, he is moving up, and he's moving up nice and slowly and methodically. He's making it happen. Exactly what I was just about to say. You don't see much of him until about now. When he comes from the back of the field, which he does 99.76% of the time in his career, he now finds himself with a point in third position. Is down to turn number nine. We go with Hoffman, Morris, and Brabham, your top three. Potts and Bumbach being pressured now by Harlan and Blade Hildebrand. One of the new rookies, one of the new stars coming into Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks as he'll have the better line here going down into that final hairpin. And there is a bunch of them all filing in. I'm surprised how mellow they're playing it within reason. Not a ton of contact. They're kind of playing nice with one another. Uh, I don't expect that to last for the entire second half of the race here, but so far it's been pretty good. I'm also expecting Blade Hildebrand to be losing a hood here sooner than later. <laughs> you like tempting fate, don't you, at times? I certainly do, man. <laughs> I, I tell you, the kid's been running hard this lap, last lap and a half like that, but eventually something's got to give, and I can't imagine that hood staying on much longer. They go past the stricken Ari Leindijk Jr., number 25 truck. His race is done here. There's the doorless. Number one, your defending champion of Paul Morris, right behind Matt Brabham now. We stay on board with Hoffman, around past the waterfall, and down as this right-hander we go at half race distance. So much still to play out here. Look at these guys all the way up in the wall. You see tire rubber from laps earlier. They use every bit of the track, and so does Troy Didi. As you see him spun around there, weird how that incident happened. I think we got a replay here on board with Bill Hines. It is Didi and Lopez. Didi gets into Lopez. Oh, oh wow. What? I, oh my God, I thought he just spun around the two of them with some big contact. Here we are on board with Didi. He gets back and forth into Lopez. Oh, upside oh. down. The slowest rollover you'll see. The field went past. This is the view from Lopez. So they go side by side. They bang wheels, and all of a sudden, the 441 is on its roof. And Lopez, lucky not to get any more damage there. Wow, Didi should have put a high mom sticker in the bottom of that truck. <laughs> As they struggle to get through that section together, they were talking about earlier, Blade Hildebrand should be coming off right about now. Perfect. There we go. So the number 68 still moving forward. What a wild ride there for Didi and Lopez. But uh, here we are, coming down towards the last handful of laps of this race, about four to go. Here we are, on board with Hoffman. The Hoff, the number 47. Replay XD camera shooting back at Maddie Brabham right now. The two of them running very well and kind of on their own. 
And Brabham, we jump on board with now the Bilbis number 83. Sized him up for a look down the inside. Hoffman will make him work for this. Hoffman wants his first win, but Brabham wants his second of the season. And he puts truck 83 to the lead here on lap seven. The passes Brabham's been making today, they're clean passes. It's almost like they're leaving the door open. He's just so mellow on the pedals, man. Like I've said before, like he has eggshells under the pedals. Good touch on the brake. He doesn't get on the gas too early. He's nice and nice and mellow, nice and calm. The only moves he makes in the cab of that truck are the ones that count. He's not making any mistakes, and boy, he is just making it look easy. Blake Hildebrand's having a day out here too, and at Empire Racing number 68, he runs in third with Cole Potts, coming down to that left-hander into turn number six. The competition caution, the second and final one, is only a moment away here, and then Brabham will lead us back hopefully to take his second win, but Hoffman in the box seat right now. As we bring it into turn number eight, that is where the mandatory competition will come out. That is the second and final mandatory comp caution for race number two here in Long Beach. There's your top five right now, Matty Bradham, Hoffman, Hildebrand, Potts, and Morris. We'll be right back with you from the streets of Long Beach. It's the closing stages of race number two and round six of the Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks here today at Long Beach as the green flag waves. Your series leader, Matt Brabham, is leading Hoffman, Hildebrand, Potts, and Morris as we get going for the final segment. It's been a wild ride here for race one and two in Long Beach, and we're down to the nitty gritty. Lap eight of 10, we've got hoods flying off, guys going three wide, Brabham, Still out in the lead. I thought the Hoff was going to give a little extra, but who's in the mix right now? Blade Hildebrand, not just for his win, he's looking for his first podium as he puts a lot of pressure on the number 47 right there. So Hildebrand, this is his time, man. He's been slowly and methodically moving up to the pack. We haven't talked a lot about him yet today. And all of a sudden, here he is in a podium position. Now Brabham starts to turn the pace up a bit here. He was nice with his passes before, but now he wants to put a margin on the field to jump on board with Cole Potts and the HallmarkTrust.com entry. Looking for the move down the inside here of Blade Hildebrand, minus the hood of his Empire Racing number 68. Look at these guys. We got Brabham. He's kind of like an old vet in this class, but then we got some of the new guys. We got, we got the Hoff, we got Hildebrand, we got Potts. I mean, look at the lineup here of the young talent. We got Gavin Harlan in the mix. So, the, kind of almost a changing of the guards for the podium here in the last year or so with so much young talent as we come down to the last final laps of this race. Look at the margin Brabham's got already. Here's Hildebrand. Oh. Here's Hildebrand. Oh. He's going to unload Hoffman down the bottom turn here and they both go off. Podium positions go beckoning for Hoffman and Hildebrand. Wow. So they get hooked together. Could possibly be not having a hood on there. Just a small mistake. Here we are on board with Hoffman. Hildebrand gets into him and gets hooked together and it was all over. There goes your podium dreams right there for race two in Long Beach. Here's one more look, we're on board with Hildebrand. Gets it, oh! And it's just locked, you can see him shaking his head. I can't do anything about this, I'm stuck in the back of the 47 and that drops him right out of contention but puts Cole Potts now into a podium position as we go down to turn number one, and suddenly Robbie Gordon's here. Right in the mix there is Gordon, that Toyo Tires number seven. So now all of a sudden, how quickly things have changed. Dropping all the way back to 11th and 12th is Hildebrand and Hoffman. So they go from second and third, looking at a great podium spot, all the way back to the last two finishers on the track out of the half and dnf yet. And now there we are, we're looking at Gordon. He's still got a lot of room to make up yet, but out front, Matty Brabs, Cole Potts, and Harlan. So great weekend so far for Harlan, winning race number one here in Long Beach this weekend. Now looking at a possible podium again. So exciting stuff coming out of the Harlan camp. Super impressed with Cole Potts this year, the 23-year-old from Minnesota originally, these days called Scottsdale, Arizona home. Race winner in only his second start on the streets of Adelaide in Australia this year and runs second to Matt Brabham right now as he weaves his way down the backside of the circuit with one and a half laps to go. Now look at Brabham, nice, calm, cool. Look at Potts, a little bit twitchy in there, nothing major. Potts, one of those guys that all he does when he's in the truck, out of the truck, at dinner, in the paddock, at the hotel, all he does is think about what he can do to go faster. And I guarantee he's doing that right now, his full 110% concentration on catching the number 83. We probably, I think we're gonna be seeing the, la the white flag coming out here momentarily. So here is Matt Brabham starting the final lap of Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks here today at Long Beach. An incredible season last year, 15 podiums, five race wins, 
He really is the guy they're going to be chasing in season 2018. But Cole Potts hasn't given up just yet. No, he hasn't, and he won't. He's going to take it right down to the nitty gritty. Potts running really strong, starting off his first street circuit, uh, circuit in Adelaide not long ago, winning the race here. He knows he's got what it takes. But then look at there is. Robbie Gordon, the Toyota Tires number seven, just took me a minute. We're on board with Morris here. Gordon starting all the way towards the back of the pack and running really well. 14th position, moving all the way up now in what could be a podium spot for him. So great run for him so far. Impressive stuff. It's just, I love to sit back sometimes and just watch Brabham drive. You very seldomly see a mistake. He's so calm, he's so cool, he's collected in that truck. It's just exciting just to watch him do what he do, does. He's a master of his craft. It's the ultimate Sunday drive as he starts to have some fun here on the final lap. Cole Potts, race winner like we said at Adelaide, lets it swing out towards the wall here on the back straight underneath the art center and down to the final turn. You're right about Gordon. That was an impressive run from the back of the field too. A couple of retirees at the early parts of these races. But now we push back to the field. There is Gordon Morris Bumbuck who started from pole position earlier today in this race. But Matt Brabham is coming around to pick up another win and become our only repeat winner in Speed Energy Stadium Super Trucks in season 2018. His dad won in Formula Atlantic racing here back in the 80s. And now the Brabham legacy continues as Matt Brabham takes the checkered flag in the final race of the day here in Long Beach. What a run for him, the checkered flag flies. You see Cole Potts fist pumping in the air over the finish line. He's stoked about his second place right there. So good run for him, Gavin Harlan as well, as we hop on board with our winner here, as he waves to the ground. Great stuff out of Matty Brabs. And what a weekend too for Gavin Harlan as well. It's this very vocal crowd here at Long Beach, very receptive to what they've seen. And now we start the party down here in turn number one. Matt Brabham picks up the final race in round six of Spin Energy Stadium Super Trucks. We'll come back and check in with our podium right after this. Stadium Super Trucks on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Speed Energy. Fuel the need, the need for speed. And by United Fiber and Data, ingenuity in infrastructure. If you haven't been to Long Beach, come down and check it out one day. It really is one of the cool destinations on our calendar as we see the winning truck of today's race, Matt Brabham to Vilbis, number 83, collecting the win from Cole Potts and Gavin Harlan, who won yesterday. Robbie Gordon, Paul Morris, Aaron Bumbach in six, back to Hamilton Jr. Eric Davis, Abdali Lopez, and Bill Hines, couple of retirees down the bottom in race number six. Oh man, that was incredible. I mean, uh, it was just a shame yesterday we got cut short because I was starting last. Didn't have enough time to come through the front and today we got the full race and that was just my main goal today is just to get through the crowd, uh, get through all the accidents. I knew there would be people going for it today. So I got out in front early and, and that was just the key to my success for the race. So just great time out there, so much fun. The fans are awesome here and uh, yeah, the Vilvis truck on, uh, on the podium is just awesome. And there's our points for after round number six, Brabham in the lead. All the way down to Ari Light Jr. in number five spot. Let's take a moment to go down to our second place finisher, Cole Potts. The race was chaotic to say the least. Starting mid-pack, I mean, you could either win the thing or lose this thing in the first corner. So just kind of kept it contained with all, all the chaos going around the track. Uh, kept on four wheels, uh, worked on my corners throughout that whole whole race, tried to hit the rubber lines and uh, try to be smooth most of all and save my brakes. And uh, that's what got us here. And I'm, I'm, you know what, winning or getting on the podium at Long Beach is amazing. I can't imagine winning being even that much more amazing just once you're on that podium it's just it's a great feeling and it, it's a special place and i'm looking forward to come back here i'm excited i really want this championship it's gonna be tough with maddie brabham and uh, gavin harlan their top competitors as well as robbie gordon but uh you know i really got to thank toyo tires method race wheels rugged radios baja designs and king shocks you know for helping me out and getting me here long beach again has served up a bit of everything here in 2018 for a new winner and a guy who looks hungrier than ever for a series crown the next event is back down under in Perth, Western Australia in May at the StadiumSuperTrucks.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at StadiumSuperTrucks. For Sean Sermony, I'm Matt Nolte. It's goodbye from Long Beach.